recently, several people have been posting on the Bed Eater Reddit, their progress following on with his World's Worst Video Card series. And it reminded me of something I wanted to try, which was to make the World's Simplest Video Card. This is based on Ben's design. Instead of using TTL logic to generate the sync signals, I've just programmed them into the EEPROM alongside the image data. On the left here is a 25.175 MHz crystal oscillator. That feeds into a 4-bit counter, which is used to simply divide that pixel clock by 16. The 4-bit counter output then goes into this chain of two 8-bit counters, and they generate the address for the EEPROM. The EEPROM is a 32K module, the same kind of one that Ben uses in the 6502 project. It obviously has eight data bits output. The top data bit is a reset signal, which resets the counters at the end of the frame. The next two bits are the vertical and horizontal sync signals. And then the remaining five bits contain color information for the pixels. And the output from the EEPROM is latched through this 8-bit D flip-flop. Uh, this is important because when the address changes on the EEPROM it takes a while for its data pins to catch up with the address change. And for the sync signals in particular that is a major problem because the monitor requires a very clean sync signal and it doesn't like it when the data pins are slow changing states. And the outputs of the latch go straight into the VGA connector through a uh, network of resistors for the colour channels, uh, which is very similar to how Ben did his. I've kept the vertical resolution all the way up at 480, and as I said before, the horizontal resolution is only 40. So you can see that the end result is very elongated pixels. But I think this works quite well because it improves the quality of the dithering, for example, and reducing the vertical resolution would have actually still required me to use all the space on the EEPROM anyway, it's not trivial to make it repeat lines with the way I've done this, so I might as well make good use of the extra data there. You can also see that there aren't very many artifacts, you know, a lot of these uh, systems have vertical bars through them like Ben's did, and that's partly because I've used a latch after the EEPROM, which just prevents the slow transition of the EEPROM's data outputs from affecting the image quality. And that was actually essential because with the horizontal sync and vertical sync pulses coming from the EEPROM, uh, as well as that reset signal, um, it just didn't work well at all without the latch. But that's not the whole story. There was more to it than just adding the latch. Uh, there, there were still bars showing up there. And the main thing I had to do to address those was add better decoupling capacitors and bolster some of the power supplies to the positive and negative rails. Uh, even though it's only on one breadboard, it still suffered a bit from drooping on the power rails. So, And adding, adding a few extra connections from top to bottom of the board uh, pretty much resolved all of the artifacts. I thought I'd give you guys a look at the code as well. So you can see here, sorry about the image quality, I'm only filming this on my phone and it keeps also focusing. And at the top here you can see we have some definitions of which data pins on the EEPROM are going to have different purposes. It's not actually up to date, the red, green and blue ones are not correct. Um, you can see the ROM size there, you can see some vertical timing and horizontal timing information and the vertical and horizontal sync polarities. So it's pretty easy to change this stuff around to output a different video mode. Then you have this genline function which uh, basically works out the byte data to go into the EEPROM for a single line of the video display, uh, depending on whether it's a V-Sync line or a image line or just a general porch line or something like that. Um, and that, that puts the horizontal sync in there as well as, well as the image data. And then you can see down here we're loading the image data which I've pre-processed into a uh, binary file listing the bytes which are correctly encoded f with values from 0 to 31 according to the RGB pins on the data lines. Uh, that that kind of gets fed into the genline function to uh, merge with the sync information. And finally we just output it all to a ROM file, which is 32, 32k and ready to burn into the EEPROM. 
You can see here another look at the output circuit. You can see the five resistors there. One of them is uh, a 470 ohm resistor on the blue line, and the red and green lines both have a 1K5 and a 680 ohm, just like in Ben's circuit. So there you have it. It doesn't quite fit on one breadboard. Um, I think I could probably squeeze it on if I tried hard enough, um, partly due to the way I wired the VGA connector. Um, it's nine, nine pins wide, which is rather wide, and I've got a lot of grounds on there which I don't really need. So yeah, I jokingly claim this is the simplest VGA circuit you could make. I don't think that's true. I'm sure someone will think of a way of making a simpler one. The main option that I can see is to substitute some PLDs for some of these counters and maybe you could get it down to two PLDs instead of three counters or something like that. You might be able to get away with 40-40 12-bit counters instead of two 8-bits and a 4-bit as well. I don't know whether that would actually work but you know maybe someone wants to try. So as always I hope you enjoyed this and uh, please do leave comments if you have any queries or questions. I'd be very happy to explain anything that's not obvious about how it works. I don't have schematics because I just built this up on the fly on the breadboard but if there's any interest I can easily draw a schematic up. It's very simple really and um, yeah, publish the Python code or something if people are interested. And I also have in mind a very crude way of hooking this up to a Benny to 6502 build that would allow some form of video output without requiring many more chips than are already present here. So yeah, if you're interested in any of that, please let me know, and uh, as always, like and subscribe, and push the bell if you want to get notifications when I post new videos, and if you try out something like this yourself, then I'd love to hear about it. Have a good day.